morning. It is Friday. Or at least these daily lectionary readings are for Friday. It's Friday, August 11th, 2023. Our psalm reading once again is going to be Psalm 85, 8 through 13. Our Old Testament reading continues the story that we were reading yesterday. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 17 through 19, and then 30 through 40. And then our New Testament reading, we continue in the book of Acts, Acts 18, 24 through 28. And we will be taking a look once again in the message. And with it being Friday, we're taking a look at what is going to be happening at church on Sunday. Psalm 85. I can't wait to hear what he'll say. God's about to pronounce his people well. The holy people he loves so much. So they'll never again live like fools. See how close his salvation is to those who fear him. Our country is home base for glory. Love and truth meet in the street. Right living and whole living embrace and kiss. Truth sprouts green from the ground. Right living pours down from the skies. Oh yes, God gives goodness and beauty. Our land responds with bowing and blessings. Right living strides out before him and clears a path for his passage. The Old Testament reading from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. The moment Ahab saw Elijah, he said, So it's you, O oh, troublemaker. It's not I who has caused the trouble in Israel, said Elijah, but you and your government, you've dumped God's way and commands and run off after the local gods, the Baals. Here's what I want you to do. Assemble everyone in Israel at Mount Carmel and make sure that the special pets of Jezebel, the 450 prophets of the local gods, the Baals and the 400 prophets of the horror goddess Asherah are there. Then Elijah told the people, enough of that. It's my turn. Gather around. And they gathered, and they put the altar back together, for by now it was in ruins. Elijah took twelve stones, one for each of the tribe of Jacob, the same Jacob to whom God had said, From now on your name is Israel. He built the stones into the altar in honor of God. Then Elijah dug a fairly wide, wide trench around the altar. He laid firewood on the altar, cut up the ox, put it on the wood, and said, Fill four buckets with water, and drench both the ox and the firewood. Then he said, Do it again. And they did it. Then he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. The altar was drenched, and the trench was filled with water. When it was time for the sacrifice to be offered, Elijah, the prophet, came up and prayed, O God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make it known right now that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I'm doing what I'm doing under your orders. Answer me, God. O answer me and reveal to his people that you are God, the true God, and that you are giving these people another chance at repentance. Immediately the fire of God fell and burned up the offering, the wood, the stones, the dirt, and even the water in the trench. All the people saw it happen and fell on their faces in awe, worship, exclaiming, God is the true God. God is the true God. And Elijah told them, grab the Baal prophets. Don't let one get away. They grabbed them. Elijah had them taken down to the brook of Kishon, and they massacred the lot. Acts 18, 24-28 is the New Testament reading. A man named Apollos came to Ephesus. He was a Jew, born in Alexandria, Egypt, and a terrific speaker, eloquent and powerful in his preaching of the scripture. He was well educated in the way of the master and fiery in his enthusiasm. 
Apollos was accurate in everything he taught about Jesus up to a point, but he only went as far as the baptism of John. He preached with power in the meeting place. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and told him the rest of the story. When Apollos decided to go to Achaia province, his Ephesian friends gave their blessing and wrote a letter of recommendation for him, urging the disciples that there to welcome him with open arms. The welcome paid off. Apollos turned out to be a great help to those who helped and become believers through God's immense generosity. He was particularly effective in public debate with the Jews as he brought out proof after convincing proof that from the scripture that Jesus was in fact God's Messiah. And here ends our readings for the day.